Hi guys. So I figured it was such a nice day today that I would take you out uh, here to the park. Uh, just a bit of change of scenery, get out of the house. Um, so it's been a little more than a week since I got off doing my 100 mile running week. Uh, and I just wanted to have a discussion to share some of the thoughts and uh, things I noticed uh, and the lessons I've learned while, while taking on this, uh, this challenge. Um, I think the first thing that I noticed uh, while running this week was uh, just the amount of time that it took uh, to be able to get all the mileage in. Um, I was about 14 hours uh, running during the week, a little under 14 hours, um, which is maybe a three to four hour increase from a typical week for me. Um, however, I just I felt like running was taking up pretty much my whole week, doing uh, double runs uh, a couple of those days, and it just felt like you come back from the morning run, uh, you do your strength, you you do so you get a shower, you uh, eat some food, and then uh, it would be like I'd upload the videos, uh, start looking at the content, and then uh, next thing I knew it was six o'clock in the afternoon and I'd have to get the next run in or else I would uh, not have enough daylight to be able to get good footage for you guys. So uh, I just felt like I spent the whole week running. I felt like it affected a number of different aspects of my life. Um, I think the first was sleep. Um, I think running so much, uh, my body was always kind of in this on state. Um, it, it was always kind of on edge and it never really you know, I never really knew when I was going to have to run next, so it was really hard for my body to shut off. Uh, and I found that I wasn't getting very good sleep. I just kind of lay there at night and try to get to sleep, but uh, I just I couldn't shut off. I was just kind of like on edge. I was physically very tired from all the running I was doing, um, but I could never really switch off and get proper sleep. And I think during that entire week, I maybe got one or two uh, really good nights of sleep. Um, the next was hunger. Uh, I was like always hungry, as you might imagine. Um, and even kind of to the state where like my stomach would be full, but I'd still be hungry. It would be like I knew I, I needed to get more energy in. Um, so that was an interesting observation. Uh, and I think everything else that I noticed kind of just fed off of those items. So um, I found, you know, that my motivation and my mood, I think, were being affected um, probably because I wasn't getting enough sleep and maybe because I wasn't getting enough energy in. And the thing is, you end up in this sort of state where, okay, well, if you're down on energy and you're hungry, you don't feel like putting the time in to make proper nutritious food. You're reaching for high energy uh, quick food, something like chips and, uh, you know, even just eating peanut butter straight out of the jar. So uh, I would say that my, you know, my nutrition probably also suffered a little bit during this week. I also found that my training was suffering from the perspective that I wasn't getting enough recovery. Um, there was quite a bit of time on feet and there was not a lot of cases where I was going more than 12 hours without running. Uh, and I found that that didn't uh, allow or accommodate for me to recover properly from the training and the workouts that I was doing. So, you know, that would mean that, you know, when I was going into that Thursday workout, I was still not fully recovered from Monday, um, just because of the amount of mileage I was putting in. And, you know, you gotta wonder if you're, if you're not able to give your fullest on the next workout, you know, uh, does that actually make the workout effective? Um, and I think we have to, you know, consider that all of these items, you know, the, the fact that the hunger, the sleep, the energy levels, the motivation, the mood, uh, the training, this all self-perpetuates. Is doing 100 miles a week, is that something that I could find sustainable? Uh, I think for me personally, I, I don't think I would be able to find it sustainable. I think what maybe surprised me the most was just the effect that all of these aspects had on my training. Um, and I think previously, maybe ignorantly, I had thought that um, if you could put more miles in, 
that that would always lead to more growth or a, or a higher growth rate. Um, you know, at some point, yes, you're you're getting diminishing returns, um, but you know, I think that you know, if you're doing 70, 80 miles right now, if you could push and do 90 or 100, um, that you would you would grow more as a runner, more as an athlete, um, and that kind of the only risk that would be there would be uh, that you might have an increased risk of injury. But I think what I found when you take all these factors into account um, that your curve for your growth over the amount of miles that you're doing, I think I found that there's a drop off in there that as you increase your miles, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're growing or growing most effectively as a runner. Uh, I think there's a certain point where, you know what, uh, beyond this mileage, um, you're not growing any further as an athlete. You're, you're not able to recover properly. You're not able to get in, um, you know, a proper set of training. Uh, and I think for me, uh, right now, what I found is that's probably around the 70, 80 mile, the like 120 kilometer range, um, and doing a hundred miles pushes me into that region where I'm no longer growing as an athlete. I'm, I'm actually, or at least I'm not, I'm not at my peak growth rate. Uh, and if I reduce mileage, I would actually be able to grow faster. Um, and I, and, you know, this is not to say that uh, you can't change what your peak growth rate is. I think absolutely that that changes over uh, the your career as a runner. And you know, if you take me uh, six years ago, certainly my peak mile, my peak growth wouldn't have occurred at 120 kilometers. You know, I was only doing 30, 40 kilometers a week. Maybe that was my peak growth at that time. And, as I ramped up mileage, I was able to also change the, the point at which I got my peak growth rate. Um, but right now, doing 100 miles, uh, it just it pushes too far for me. I'm not actually able to, to grow at that point uh, as effectively as a runner, um, which is interesting. Um, I also found that these after effects, uh, they lingered for quite a while. I'm a little bit more than a week afterwards and I still feel like uh, I'm recovering from having done this 100 mile week. Uh, and maybe that's from the really big Saturday run, the, the, the marathon that I did. Um, but I'm feeling like my energy levels are still low, my motivation's a little bit lower. I'm not, still not quite feeling normal, you know? Uh, and that's, that's a little bit more than a week after having done this 100 mile week. So that puts into the question, is this sustainable? And, you know, I think it depends who you are. Um, but for me at this moment, uh, I think 100 miles is beyond, 100 miles a week is beyond uh, my sustainable uh, mileage rate. So would I do it again? Um, well, I think the sensible thing to ask there would be, what would be the point? I mean, uh, we've already determined that I uh, am beyond my peak growth rate as a runner. Uh, I think it pushes me beyond my level of enjoyment of running. And so if I'm not growing and I'm not uh, enjoying it, then what would be the point in putting a really big mileage week like this in again? Um, I think it's you know, more sensible and more sustainable for me to be doing uh, 60, 70 mile weeks, 100 to 120 kilometers a week, and I'm growing more as a runner, and I'm able to push towards the, the goals that I do have as a runner right now. I don't need to be doing 100 mile weeks to get it done, you know. And I think this is where you have to have an important distinction here. I mean, this is, this is training, this is not the race itself. So, you know, the whole purpose of training is to be able to progress and to grow and to reach your goals as an athlete, you know. If this was the race, you know, then, then absolutely. I think if uh, I don't have any doubts that I could do a bigger mileage week than this, I don't think that 100 miles is my limit, you know, I, but then at what point do you stop? You know, do you do, okay, well then let's do a 180 kilometer week. Okay. then let's do a 100 nautical mile week. Let's do a 200 kilometer week. I mean, where do you stop really? I mean, a uh, hundred miles is just an arbitrary number in itself. So, um, I think you could keep setting goals for yourself, but you know, at the end of the day, really, they're just arbitrary numbers. You know, whatever arbitrary number that 100 miles, you know, that looks good on paper, but uh, it means probably too much mileage for me to be able to get in in a training week. Um, 
but if the goals were otherwise, if the goals were to get as much mileage as possible in a week, if that was whatever the situation was, maybe a race that I was in, maybe a competition I was in, then for sure I could I could probably push this mileage and more for another week. But if it's a regular training week, uh, it just doesn't really make much sense to me. So am I glad that I took on this challenge? Am I glad that I took on the 100 mile week? I think that's a, a resounding yes. Um, I think it's really important to um, find out where your limits are and to push into new territory. Um, I could have just as easily run this week and found it to be um, you know, really good for my growth as a runner and really sustainable and that would have been a great discovery. But I think it's equally a great discovery that I realized that, okay, this is probably too much mileage for me and to see what it feels like to do too much mileage and to realize that wait actually there is a more effective more efficient uh, better way forward uh, where you're going to enjoy running better and you're going to be able to be a better athlete faster um, so in that sense absolutely no regrets having gone through this and I encourage you to do the same to explore new territories and, and new boundaries and find out where your limits might be at the very least, I think it gives me one more step of confidence. Uh, you know, if I ever do go after another ultra marathon, I've only done one, it was just a measly 58k. Having done this training week uh, gave me a, an enormous amount of confidence to do, you know, maybe a 50 miler or even a 100 miler. You know, knowing what it's like to do that sort of mileage back to back, I think, you know, I, I think I know I have it in my legs. I think I know I'd be capable of it. It would just be a matter of stringing it together on the day and I, I think uh, you know if, if I'm able to pull off this goal I think that's given me an enormous amount of confidence to be able to to take on whatever distance running goals I have out there in the future. So how about you guys? Have you run a big mileage week? Maybe you did a 100 mile week as well. Um, what did you find? Did you agree with what I found in, in my experiences or did you have a completely different experience? Uh, let me know in the comments section below. I'd be curious to know your thoughts. This video was recorded as part of my 100 mile running week series. If you haven't checked out the other videos in the series, go and check them out. Links in the description below and up there. If you like this, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, Keep putting one foot in front of the other.